really excited about the new renovation. The greens are 26, 27 years old. They're tired, they don't perform the way that they used to. From a drainage perspective, they just, they, they kind of hold water where they shouldn't. Uh, the new greens, uh, we spent a lot of time engineering the root zone mix. The greens are gonna play extremely firm. They're gonna drain very quickly. So I'm very excited about that. A lot of green extensions, bunkers taken away, bunkers added, new turf conditions, which is gonna to add to the value of the golf course. You know, over the past several years, especially trying to get the golf course at the high level that we want, our 26 year old greens aren't reacting properly. It's, it's about time that we uh, definitely redid the turf conditions for the greens. In a big project like this, planning is everything. Let's walk through the timeline for the year. We'll start at July where the plan is to break ground and begin reshaping and seeding all green complexes. Greens will be finished by September, meaning all attention will now be aimed at finishing irrigation, completing this process by the end of November, because that's when the seasons turn, where the only thing we can do is pray for good weather and no surprises. And if we make it out with any hiccups, we'd resume in the month of March, the final touches, where we lean on the team to bring us to the promised land. We're really just going to let George Lay finish the irrigation process, Rich Labar finish the construction, Tom Marzoff is going to be here with his team, Team Fazio, kind of overseeing the project. I think it's such a great story for the Met section and I think there's going to be a lot of interest around this project so to memorialize it, kind of get the word out there, you know, that restoration and renovation can be done. It, it is a good thing. We're only open three months this year. Members are paying full dues. They're behind this 100%. We're off to a great start. Uh, Labar started a few days ago. They, they came in with a force of 50 guys and pretty uh, overwhelming staff and uh, really hit the ground running. To date, I think we have about four greens completely cored out in, in about three and a half days, which is very impressive. George Lay team, they've done a fantastic job. Their goal was to have all the main line in you know, when we close the golf course and they've accomplished that goal. On top of that, they've also installed 80% of the fairway irrigation, which we expected to start as the course closed. So, that's a huge leg up for us in, uh, in our you know, goal of uh, seeding all the fairways. Tom Marzoff is, is adding a lot of value on some of these golf holes, and 13 is a great example where if you miss a little bit right, what could be a 10-foot chip now could be a 60-yard chip. I, I think there's, there's a lot of really neat, you know, they look great, and they're going to play great. The big part of why we're here and why are we doing this is replacement of the life cycle components that are wearing out. And then if you're going to do greens, is there anything else you'd like to look at at each and every green to improve our position in the game. Hudson National is proud to move up in the top 100 Golf Digest listings this year. We moved up to 86. You know, you'd like to move higher than that. Who wants to be 86th at anything? We'd like to move up, right? And so for the next three months, the crew would focus on coring out all greens and receding all fairways before the cold weather. Exceptional. Uh, we had really, it was mild. Uh, we had a lot of growth on the greens with the covers being on them. We actually mowed them numerous times that you know we hadn't planned on. You know, it was really advantageous for us to to kind of give us an early pop with the the grass, and and I think it's really set us up to to have a really successful spring. Everything about this project, uh, you know, financially, weather-wise, uh, result-wise, lined up perfectly. A mild winter in Croton meant the course would be in great shape for its reopening. Finally, it was time for the staff to show a year's worth of upgrades to the membership. So I think number three, uh, the, the change there, the expansion on the green in the front right is an understated uh, change. Where there's typically a bailout area, and now bailing out there, uh, you're likely to run your ball into the bunker um, as, the, as the green right, rolls right into the bunkers. third tier on four, 
uh, is going to be difficult to get to and the bunker is pulled in on the right sides. I would say the fifth hole is, is dramatically different. It was a weaker hole on the golf course, uh, but we alleviated balls uh, collecting off the tee into the fairway in certain areas. We kind of leveled the fairway out. We went back left and we cored out and we went as far as we could until we found bedrock and, and that was kind of our starting point and built up from there and there's some nice rock outcrops as a result. Left side there being shaved is going to add a ton of, of variety, whether you want to play a, a lower bumping shot or you know, you want to play something higher with spin, you could even putt it. So now you have a very complex green, which from the top of that hill hitting a 160 yard shot, gauging the elevation change, gauging your direction, wind, it's going to be a very strong hole. The, the real big change on, on number six is going to be the additional length we've added in the back of the tee box. It's going to make that drive a whole lot a whole lot more difficult. The left side of six and, and the layup bunker kind of protecting people from just bombing it up the hill. It might even be a three wood because of how tight it is up there. Initially we went, uh, we, we wanted to have the green without bunkers and then we had a visit from Tom Fazio and we walked the golf course and he thought strongly that you know, having a front right bunker and a, and a back left bunker would improve the hole. And now with the roll off on the left hand side, there's a lot more character, a lot more unique shot opportunities around that green. I thought they did a really nice job of, of incorporating some low mo areas around the bunkers. It's gonna make you think a lot more than, than you used to have to. It really depends where that pin is. If that pin is front left, you wanna miss in that front right bunker so you have a little bit of room, but even still, that's gonna be a downhill bunker shot. If that pin is middle or favorite on the right hand side. I think I'm just trying to get it up the throat of that green and if anything it funnels left into the collection area. Still a, a dicey pitch but at least you'll have some green to work with. The new bunker on seven is a great um, a great bunker to frame the hole and uh, you know give you something to, to hit towards and uh, you, you don't want to go past it or you're going to run down the hill and, and could be in trouble. Um, and that's, that's kind of where you want to be going at the green from, uh, you know, 120 yards out. Green complex, I think that's a huge improvement with the closely mown turf coming down the hill. You used to have a couple of bunkers on the right. It was kind of a teardrop green that collected to the front portion. You had a big false front. You're now going to have that in the front and you're going to have that on the right side of the green. There's a bunker that sits in the middle portion of the green now, just short. It was a good hole prior, but I think it's it's gonna make you think and have to lock in uh, that much more. Uh, nine, uh, the new fairway bunker on the right-hand side. Uh, that will definitely, for the longer hitters, will have to take that into account. And then uh, around the, the back right side of nine green, there's some more roll-off areas to add a little more interest. Hole number 14. Uh, it was a split fairway, kind of par five. Uh, back in the day, you know, we had some erosion issues. That's why the fairway was split and that little slope in between was rough. Uh, we don't have those issues any anymore. Everything is kind of settled in, so we kind of blended that fairway into one. I think it looks amazing. That definitely needed to be addressed. Uh, it's been talked about for many years and, you know, we fixed it. And then uh, same hole 14, pushing that green back around the pond and now having those hole locations, you know, out over the water on the back third of that green. Uh, that's something I think that we've really needed. Yeah, 18 went from the hardest finishing hole in Westchester to definitely the hardest finishing hole in Westchester. I mean, I don't even know what to do off the tee. You have a bunker mid left, right in the landing area that they added. The fairway is still tight. There's still that tree there on the right, and then they extended the green further right. So you have a, a kind of a collection area runoff short right of that green, which is incredibly intimidating. I mean, for a hole that's already given me nightmares, I'm, I'm terrified. I think the the. You know, the reaction to the, the changes is going to be just unanimously positive. I can't pick out a bad change. I think everything is, is just A plus and the members are in for a real treat. The whole experience when you come here, uh, I think our amenities are great, but the real bones of this place are the golf course. It always comes first.